I'm Max Sterling, welcome to LARPcasm. Today we're going to make something I call meat pockets that you can use in your LARP. And what they are is a food item that just tastes great and is very simple to make. It's basically meat inside of a dough with some toppings and it's just delicious. Now these will work in any genre of game that you have. If it's medieval fantasy, you call them meat pies. If it's you know, dystopian future, you call them uh, rat burgers. If it's post-apocalyptic, they could be, uh, you know, long, long pig pockets or something. I don't know. You make up the names. I'm going to show you how to make the item. You can substitute a lot of the ingredients. You can substitute the meats around. You can even make it meatless if you have people that are vegetarian or vegan. And, you know, just you do whatever you need to do to make it fit into your dietary needs. But I'm going to show you the easiest, simplest, and basic way to make these meat pockets, as I call them. And you basically just need meat, dough, and some fillings. So let's go ahead and get started, and uh, I hope that you enjoy. So the first step is to make some hamburgers, basically. I took a pound of meat, turned it into four quarter pound patties, and then we'll go ahead and cook those up. Now you could also do loose meat, you could do shredded meat, you could do a full steak, whatever you want to put in here, but it needs to be you know, about a quarter pound patty size in order to fit inside the amount of dough that we have. Now, depending on what type of dough you use and stuff, you might be able to do it a little bit bigger, but I'm using pre-made stuff, so I know that this size fits well. We're gonna cook these low and slow in a cast iron skillet here on the stove, but you can also do this on a campfire or on a grill, so depending on what your campsite is like, you can still make this wherever you're at. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use conventional tools here since I have access to them. As far as the meat, if you like something medium rare uh, or rare, you're going to want to cook these until just before that point because they're actually going to be cooked twice. So if you start out with a medium well or something, it's going to end up well done probably by the time it's all said and done. I would suggest that you do not leave these too moist because if they're too soppy, then it's not going to work with the dough. I would suggest going for something around a medium because if not, the juices are going to flow out and the dough is going to fall apart. So if you like your meat really rare, uh, you know, you may have to, you know, eat it a little drier than you're used to, or, you know, you can play around with the recipe and see how you can figure it out. When they get close to being done, you can just add, you know, a little bit extra spice if you want to kick things up a notch. And then it's on to the next step. I would say about right there is great. And the next step and where the magic comes in is this crescent dough sheet. Now if you can't get this where you're located, then this is going to be a little bit more difficult and you'll have to come up with an alternative. Pizza dough will probably work. Uh, anything that is just an easy flat dough. If you want to make it yourself from scratch, that's cool too. But this is super easy, especially if you're out in the woods camping. And what you get is one long dough sheet, so you sort of need to cut it to size once you get your burgers. So let's go ahead and do that. This looks about right. So we're gonna take one of our nice charred burgers here, put it right in the center. If you have any of those peppers left, you can sort of stick them in there. And then what we're gonna do is cut it right along here so we can fold it up and over. Now this dough is pretty flexible, but you want it to remain fairly thick so that the burger doesn't rip through it. This is also the time you wanna put any sort of additional seasoning on it that you may choose to do. Now I went ahead and shredded a little uh, mild cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese combo, so we're gonna put that on there. If you don't like cheese, you can skip that part. If you want to add tomatoes, lettuce, any of that stuff, you can, but a lot of that doesn't really hold up well in the second baking process. 
you know, but it's up to you. You can always cut it open when it's all finished and stick that stuff in later, but this is a good time to add any components in that you want to be inside of the little meat pocket. All right, so I threw some parsley on there. If you're doing this medieval themed, I'd suggest using larger, coarser ingredients. So if you have larger, coarsely ground salt, parsley, big leaves of things, you know, hand cut fresh ingredients, that'd be the better way to do this. But, you know, like I said, depending on the genre and how in depth you feel you want to be, you know, you go for it. This is also where you'd add ketchup and mustard and that type of stuff if you want. Uh, I'm not going to do that. This is a pretty good beef that I bought. It's not like Kobe or anything, but it's a pretty good cut of beef, so I don't really want to add anything to it. And that's pretty much it. You're better off to let the burgers cool down a little bit before you put them in here, because if not, this dough will already start doing stuff to you. If the burgers are nice and room temperature, then you can stick them in here because they're gonna get heated up when we cook this dough right now. For the final step here, I'm gonna use my air fryer oven. Now, if you don't have an air fryer oven, that's okay. You can just use a regular oven, or you can put it back in the cast iron skillet, you know, whatever you need to do. But because I have this, and I know it's gonna come out great and be very simple to do, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it in here. So I went ahead and hit it with a little olive oil so that it browns while it's in here. Now, the dough itself says 375 or 350 for 10 to 13 minutes. Sorry, I don't know what Celsius that is, but we're gonna go ahead and just do 375 and we're gonna do it for 10 minutes. And we'll come back and see when it's done. And here is our meat pocket. Wow. And there you have it, your meat pocket. It's very portable, easy to travel once it cools down. You could wrap this in some sort of fabric or cloth. People could carry it around and eat it. Uh, you're not really supposed to cut it open, but let me cut it open and show you what the inside looks like. So now, of course, the more stuff you pack in there, you know, the tastier it will be, but that's pretty much what you're dealing with. So it's similar to like a Jamaican beef patty uh, and other regions may have something similar to this but I find this to be a very simple food that you can make that really sort of helps with immersion and if you don't want to go to all the effort of making actual medieval style like little meat pies and stuff this is a real easy way to sort of get around that if you're playing a medieval fantasy game then it's really good and like I said it works for really any genre and uh, they really are just delicious Mm-hmm. So, I hope you'll give it a try. And like I said, if you don't eat meat or you don't like any of these ingredients, you can mix and match and omit them and change them. The main thing is if you're looking for an easy meal to make at your LARP, a little bit of meat, this uh, crescent dough sheet that they sell, some cheese, some ketchup, some spices, and you're good to go. Now. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you give it a try. If you do, please let me know how it turns out for you and uh, how you like it. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and of course share this video. And as always, adventure on.